Have you ever noticed that there are parallel and perpendicular lines in so many things around us? Besides being easy on the eye, the parallel and perpendicular lines that we see in buildings and structures are very practical and sometimes even necessary. Can you imagine what would happen if two train tracks were not parallel? Or what if buildings were not built perpendicular to the ground? Parallel and perpendicular lines have special properties that make them useful to work with. In our lesson today, we will look at special properties of lines that make them parallel or perpendicular and use these properties to work out the equations of lines. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to work out the equation of a straight line through a given point that is parallel to a given line and you should be able to work out the equation of a straight line through a given point that is perpendicular to a given line. First of all, let's think about what parallel means when we are working in the Cartesian plane. Have a look at this graph. It represents the function with the equation y equals 3x. If I shift this graph by two units at the y-axis, I get a new graph with the equation y equals 3x plus 2. Oh, I remember this. We learned it when we were studying functions and how they change. Okay, so what graph will we get if we shift the graph y equals 3x down by one unit? Surely it would be y equals 3x minus 1. Certainly. Now can you tell me what properties all three of these graphs share? In other words, what is the same about all of them? The gradient. They all have a gradient of 3. That's right. You saw from the equations that they all have the same gradient of 3. How is this property shown in the graphs? Oh, I see. All lines look parallel. And this is very important to today's lesson. Parallel lines have equal gradients. So parallel lines will have the same m value in the equation y equals mx plus c. Now let's play around a bit more with parallel lines. Here is the line y equals negative x. I want you to draw two lines parallel to it. You can place them anywhere on the Cartesian plane. Okay, let me put one in here. And I'll make another one here. You found that easy enough. Well done. It doesn't matter where you decide to place them. As long as they have the same slope as the line I gave you, they will be parallel to it. In other words, they have to have the same gradient. So, if the lines have the same gradient, that means they're parallel. And if they're parallel, that means they have the same gradient. Exactly. Now keep this in mind for our first problem. Find the equation of the line passing through the point 5, 7 and parallel to the line y equals negative a fifth x plus 4. Gee, all I got from that is that I must find out the equation of a line. Well, that's a good start. What we know about the equation you must find is that it passes through 5, 7. And it's parallel to another line. The line with this equation. Okay, now I get it. What is it that we're looking for? An equation for a line can always be written as y equals mx plus c. So we must find the m and the c for this line. Any ideas? Well, for the m, we know the two lines are parallel. So surely our line has the same m as this one. What is the gradient of this line? Oh yes, minus one-fifth. Exactly. So our line will also have a gradient of minus one-fifth. I get it. Now replace m in the equation. So y equals minus one-fifth x plus c. And that leaves you with the c to work out. How do we get the c? Can we use the point five seven to find c? 
Absolutely. Substitute 5, 7 into the equation and you can get the value of C from that. And once I know M and C, I can write down the equation of the line. I get 7 for Y equals minus 1 fifth times 5 plus C. Yes. And if you carry on working that out, you get C equals 8. So the equation is y equals minus 1 fifth x plus 8. Good. You find the equation of a line parallel to a given line. You use the gradient of the given line and a point that the new line passes through. So here's our next challenge. How would you find the equation of a line that is perpendicular to another line? Perpendicular. Remind me of what that means, please. If two lines are perpendicular, it means they intersect at 90 degrees. Here's a straight line. Can you draw another line, any line that is perpendicular to it? This line would be perpendicular, I think. Perfect, MacGyver. We've just seen that the gradients of parallel lines are equal. So do you think that the gradients of perpendicular lines can also be equal? No, they possibly can't, eh? I mean, look at this. This one slopes up to the right, so its gradient will be positive. And this one slopes down to the right, so its gradient will be negative. Good thinking, MacGyver. If the gradient of a line is positive, then the gradient of a line perpendicular to it will be negative. Here are two lines with equations y equals 2 thirds x plus 5 and y equals minus 3 divided by 2x plus 4. Do you think they are perpendicular? They look perpendicular. Let me check with my protractor. Yes, 90 degrees. Now here's something very fascinating. Multiply the gradients of the two lines together. Okay, the gradient of the first equation is 2 thirds. The second equation has a gradient of negative 3 divided by 2. If I multiply them together, I get, uh, cancel here and here, negative 1. But how does that help us? Well, in this example, the product of the gradients of two perpendicular lines is negative 1. If you test hundreds of perpendicular lines, you always get the same result. The product of the gradient is always a negative 1. This is a property of the gradients of any two lines that are perpendicular to each other. Wow, I guess that should be very helpful to us. It is. Let me show you how it helps with calculations. Here's a problem to solve. Find the equation of the line passing through the point 2, negative 1, and perpendicular to the line y equals minus 3 quarters x minus 12. Let me have a go at this. There are two lines involved here. There's the line that we already know, and there's a line we need to find out. We can write down y equals mx plus c for the line that we need to find out. Now you need to calculate the m and the c for this line. Let's take out the m value first. What did you do? Mm. The m of the given line is negative 3 quarters. So the m of the perpendicular line will be... Ah, no. I need some help here. We know the two lines are perpendicular. So the product of the gradient is negative 1. In other words, if we multiply the two gradients together, we will get an answer of negative 1. That means we need to find a number that can be multiplied by negative 3 quarters to give an answer of negative 1. So we can say minus 3 quarters times something must equal negative 1. Correct. What do you think the number is? Hmm. Well, I know it has to be positive. Then to cancel out the 3 on top, I guess we need a fraction with a 3 at the bottom. Then we need a 4 at the top to cancel with the 4 over here. My answer would be positive 4 divided by 3. Well done. Have a look at the numbers of the two gradients. There is a quick way to get from the gradient of the known line to the gradient of the perpendicular line. Can you see it? I think so. You can change the sign of the first gradient and then take the reciprocal. You know, turn it upside down. Well explained. The two numbers are reciprocals of each other. But the one is negative and the other is positive. Now back to our question. We have found the gradient of the perpendicular line. So far, we have y equals 4 divided by 3x plus c. We still have to find the c value. 
we can take the coordinates of a point that we know is on the line and substitute them into the equation. Okay, that's the point. 2, negative 1. So y will be negative 1 and x will be 2. Let me see. I get c to be minus 3 and 2 thirds. Spot on. Remember, this isn't the end of the question yet. What do you still need to do? All oh, right, I'm supposed to end up with the equation of the line. I forgot to go back to the formula and put the c value in there. So the equation of the line is y equals 4 thirds x minus 3 and 2 thirds. It's easy to forget where you're heading with your calculations. So when you're finished with your calculations, go back to the question and see if you have actually answered it. MacGyver, in what we've done so far, have you noticed the pattern for finding an equation for a straight line that is perpendicular or parallel to another line? I think so. Whether we want to find parallel or perpendicular lines, it all comes down to the same thing. We need to find an m value and a c value. Once we find the m and c values, we can write down the equation of a line. That's a good summary. We also need to note that parallel lines have equal gradients. And the product of the gradients of perpendicular lines is negative 1. When we have found the gradient, we usually have to substitute the coordinates of the point that we know back into the equation in order to find the c value. Now let me test you with a few different kinds of questions. First question. Are these two lines parallel or perpendicular or neither? Um, the gradients are not the same, so that means they're not parallel. The reciprocal of a half is 2, and we've changed the sign, so these lines must be perpendicular. Correct. How about this one? Are these two lines perpendicular? Um, okay, the gradient of the one is one quarter, and the gradient of the other is four. If you multiply the two gradients together, you will get mm, one. But they are both positive, so I don't think these can be perpendicular lines. Correct. If the product of the gradient is not minus 1, then the lines are not perpendicular. Are these two lines parallel? But they look parallel. But do they have the same gradient? I don't know. I can't see the gradients in the equations. The equations have no x terms. That is because the coefficients of the x terms are both zero. In other words, we could rewrite these equations like this. I see now. Their gradients are both zero. So they both have equal gradients. Two lines with equal gradients are parallel. They must be parallel lines. As with so many things in life, there is an exception we need to look at. What if I add a line here? Do you see that the x value on this line is 3 all the time? The y value changes, but the x is always 3. The equation for this graph is simply x equals 3. Now I see the problem. This line is perpendicular to the y equals 2 line, but I can't even try to multiply gradients together and hope to get a negative 1. Yes, y equals 2 doesn't have a positive slope or a negative slope and its gradient is 0. We say that the line that is perpendicular to it has an undefined gradient. Its equation is x equals 3. So we can't use the rule m1 times m2 equals minus 1. When lines are parallel to the x-axis or the y-axis, they have gradients that can't be multiplied together to get minus 1. The lines are still perpendicular to each other, but the rule doesn't work in these cases. Right, that brings us to today's task. Find the equation of the line which is parallel to this line, y equals 3x minus 5, and passes through the point minus 4, 7. And B. Find the equation of the line which is perpendicular to the line y equals 3x minus 5 and passes through the point 0, 8. Plot this graph to check your answers. Oh, it's getting late. You better be getting home. Oh, yeah, if I'm late for supper, my mom will freak out, man. Alright, cheers, huh? Bye.